Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday Mortgage Coach interview. Every Tuesday morning, we are here to bring you ideas, bring you inspiration, and interview amazing human beings. Sometimes it's a producer. It's someone that's killing it in the market today. Last week, I brought in a American hero, uh, and we just talked about leadership, teams, and culture. Uh, today, we're going to interview Wally Elderberry, someone that is killing it in the market today. And while the topic at hand is not teams, leadership, and culture, I've done that interview with Wally before, and we could certainly do that because he is a master at building teams, leadership, and culture. Welcome, Wally. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Before we get started, I need to apologize to, to the community. Uh, I've been a little MIA of late, but uh, I appreciate you guys having me back on and allowing me to be part of the Cool Kids group. There, there is no apology necessary, but for about three years, Wally has literally been my opening interview of the year. And, and this year, he, he just had a dedicated focus to scaling his database, which is what we're going to talk about today, uh, what he's been up to this year and how he's scaling it. Wally, before we just do some opening comments and I bring Todd Booksman in, what, what kind of production are you doing this year and what kind of production did you do last month? You know, uh, last year we did roughly about 100 million, which was the record year for us as a team, not a, not as a branch, but as a team. And we're already north of 100 million through August, so we're we're on track to be about 150 million. Thank you. Thank, thanks to Mortgage Coach and Homebot and everything else we're talking about today, but we're on track to be about 150 million, or maybe a hair higher than that uh, in 2020. Uh, yeah, 2020. Uh, last month production was about 17 million, 50, 50, 55 loans, somewhere in that range. And how many families served for the year? Just, I want people to get a feel for just how many families are going through Team Wally. You know, I, I emailed it. I forgot about it after I emailed it. Uh, I don't, honestly, uh, it's like 375 ish, somewhere in that range. It's a, it's a lot, guys. I mean, we're, we're talking to a team leader that's running a platform that's doing 400 plus families a year. So, Finding out how he's managing his database, finding out how he's scaling, uh, I think is going to be super powerful. So now we're, we're going to spend an hour talking about how Wally's scaling his team. He's also going to be one of the teachers on the Modern Mortgage Summit. So I want to make sure everybody who tunes into the Mortgage Coach channel knows about the Modern Mortgage Summit. It's on 10-20-2020. So just a couple weeks out. Uh, we have Todd Bookspan, the Win by Noon founder, who's actually underwriting the event and putting it on. I'm helping with the content and leadership. But Todd, why don't you, in your words, uh, tell everybody about what the, the Modern Mortgage Summit is? You know, I'm, I'm so excited for it and, and grateful, Wally, that you're going to be here and certainly uh, grateful for you uh, jumping in, Dave, as a co-host. But it's going to be one day solely focused on you becoming a Modern Mortgage Originator. And even those of you who are crushing it, I just know when you have over 30 producers, over half of which have already done $100 million this year, um, teaching on uh, short subjects um, or up to 18-minute keynotes, that there's going to be so many takeaways that you can walk away with. And on top of that, we've got, as the MC Renee Rodriguez, who's going to really be unpacking each of the lessons as they go through. So each teacher will be doing you know, uh, one or a couple of, of different lessons on topics that are going to be critical for you to have them blended into your into your uh, systems, as well as the fact that we're going to have um, all of these other opportunities for, uh, you know, these keynotes, which are, you know, the who's who of our community, right? Jeremy Forcier, Shayla Gifford, Josh Metal, Dan Keller, um, you know, just to name a few. I mean, it's, I think it's going to be great, Dave. What else would you add? We're going to have Wally a little Barry. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, I think the, the point I want people to make, whether you are a modern mortgage producer, and to me, modern means you're a great leader. Like you have to be a great leader of your team. You have to be a great leader for your referral partners, but you need to use technology. You know, are you using your CRM hourly? Is it helping run your business? Are you using point of sale technology to efficiently and effectively make it easy for a client to, to apply for a loan for you and make it easy for your team to scale? Are you giving a link with a total cost analysis? I think that is a modern mortgage requirement. And of course, are you using video? Those are the three technologies that I have never, I don't, I don't think you're a modern originator if you're not using those four technologies and you're using them with every family. And then my last comments, it's micro content. So it's not one hour keynote presentations, it's 18 minute keynote presentations 
and then a lot of five to seven minute how to's, how to scale your database, how to do a move up versus refi analysis, how to get to inbox zero, how to plan and manage your day, just how to do things in three to seven minutes long. So it should be awesome. Uh, Todd, anything else you want to say before you jump and Wally and I get after it? Well, it's a hundred bucks. And for that, you get the live, you know, one day event plus access for 30 days afterwards. So I just think, you know, if you found uh, you know, some value in this community, it's a great opportunity for you to jump in and uh, get a drink from a drink from the fire hose for one day and uh, have 30 days access to it. We'd love to have you there. Um, it's just modern mortgage summit.com and I uh, look forward to seeing a, a lot of you there. I know a bunch of you have already purchased tickets and we're, uh, we're thankful for that as well. So, so guys, we have sold over 7,000 tickets uh, so far and we still have two and a half weeks to market it. So uh, sign up today, $100 live event plus 30 days. I know a lot of people are going to come in and just kind of cafeteria style view it in, you know, after the live event. So with that said, Todd, I'll let you get back to some of your family adventure. Where, where are you right now, brother? Um, I am outside of Houston, Texas right now. Um, beautiful uh, Lake Conroe is uh, in the background over there, and we are uh, slowly making our way to Atlanta. So I'll uh, see you there to live. Uh, we're the first ones on our way to the event. So we will see you there uh, in, in two and a half weeks. All right. Take care, brother. We'll see you soon. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. Crush it, Wally. Yeah. Yeah, man. Thank you. Hey, hey, Wally, before we just drill down on scaling the database, you're, you're one of the speakers and trainers at this event. What, what do you, you know, when you look at the agenda and you look at the format, what do you, what do you think about the event and what do you like about it? You know, that, that's probably some of my biggest challenge in this business. What I mean by that is, you know, when you do a lot of business, people like, don't keep, they keep secrets kind of close to them. What's great about the mortgage coach community, what's great about the event like that, there's so many people that are gonna come and share, including myself, all in every detail possible. It doesn't matter if you're in our backyard or outside our backyard. There's so much abundance of business out there. There's so much abundance of leadership that I'm just really excited to kind of learn, to learn from other you know, gurus in our business and people that I've looked up, uh, looked up to a ton, and then also I'm, I'm looking at, looking forward to impacting. I'm looking forward to sharing and, and adding value, and just giving back. Cool, cool. Well, let's let's get into the topic at hand for today's interview. If you are watching this in Facebook Live, you can put a comment live. We'll bring that into the conversation. If you're part of our Zoom live audience, which we've got a pretty significant Zoom live audience right now, if you have a question or comment, put it in chat. I will keep an eye in there and we will we'll bring that into the conversation with Wally. So, yes. so Wally, when you and I were thinking about, okay, it's been three quarters of a year, like we are right at the beginning of Q1 and, and you wanted to, and I said, what do you want to talk about Wally? Cause you said, I'm ready to share. And you said, I want to talk about scaling my database. What does, what does that mean to you? Well, I think, you know, there's a pinnacle in the mortgage world of a hundred million dollars in business. And it took me, 19 of my 20 year career to get to that pinnacle. And I banged my head against that pinnacle for so long. And once I hit the $100 million number, you gotta ask yourself the question, what, how do people do 150? How do people do 200? How do people do, you know, 300? It's their debt, their database and their referral partners, but getting a bigger pool. So I went through, you know, I, I love mortgage coach. I've been using it for, you know, years and years and years. We started following in love with HomeBot about three years ago. And we, we had so much massive success with our database for HomeBot. And they're like, now I started, I, I, I coach realtors and now I'm coaching wealth advisors or financial advisors. So as I'm coaching financial advisors, they have databases. As now I'm coaching CPAs, they have databases. And as I'm coaching and helping them grow their business and they refer in business to me, that's great. But I started learning how to get access to their database and using HomeBot and using Mortgage Coach together to market to their database. And now we're doing annual mortgage reviews for our financial advisors database, our CPAs database, our family will attorneys databases, our insurance agents databases. And that allows you to go from, you know, last year we did hundred million with 1,500 people in our database, 1,500 people is all we market to. And now we've got 8,900 people in our, our HomeBot database that we're consistently marketing to, 
and I built a team of client concierge that calls out on a daily basis to 150 of that a day. So to kind of unpack that a little bit more, you know, I, I opened the floodgates using the technology that, that I've been using for my business. Love, love that. So I want to put a few comments and a question. Wally, that one, try one thing to get rid of that beep is to close your inbox. So if you have um, uh, exchange open or an inbox, maybe close that. And that little beep that we're hearing every once in a while might go away. Uh, so, so guys, I want you to think about this this way. Your database is gold. And the pinnacle of production success that a lot of people strive for, not everybody, is that 100 million. I mean, there are people that the pinnacle of their success may be 10 loans in a single month. Uh, your goal may be 25 million in production. And, and that's great. Like I, as leader of the mortgage coach community, I don't want to just like worship the $100 million producer. Like I do interview a lot of them because I feel that if someone's doing that kind of volume, what they're doing is a best practice. Their scripts are a best practice, their emails, their sales strategies, they scale. And, 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 I, and I do believe it's not often that I talk to a loan officer and it's like, oh, I only want to close 20 loans this year. Usually the minimum number of loans I hear that someone wants to close is 50. It's like, let's just say everybody in the mortgage industry wants to close at least 50 a year. A lot of people want to close 100. And then it just goes up from there. So I want, I, one thing I want everybody to do on this call is what's your goal and then what does your database need to be? What do you need to scale your database to be? I'm going to throw out there that everybody who wants to be a career full-time mortgage professional should have a goal that I want to have a thousand people in my database. That's like a pinnacle of I'm going to make a great living for my family. I'm going to have a sustainable career. I'm going to be doing enough volume that I'm a really good loan officer. I know how to solve problems. I know how to help families. And that, let's just say that's a goal for everybody. Wally, what, when you coach people and you bring the whole database into it, you know, walk us through that. And then what is your goal? You said you went from 1500 to 10,000. I also want to know what is your database goal? Is it just like, I want to get this 10,000 and then I just want to work that and drive it? Or are you like, Oh, I want a 20,000 database under management. You know, what no, is your goal? It, it, I'm struggling to answer that question because my honest answer is I don't know. I don't know. Because what we've learned with certain databases from, like, say, our insurance agent's database, roughly around, he had roughly around 2,000 people in his database of current clients that he served. Well, that was a phenomenal list. I mean, we marketed that. Our conversion rate was high. Our pickup rate was high. The technology we used went great. But then another realtor's database, he's, and he's more of a farmer, a farm service subject. That database wasn't great. And we spent three and a half weeks marketing to that database. And it, it didn't it didn't work as well. So um, you know that 8,900 number of families in, uh, in the database. I'm, I'm thinking I score I scale that down to maybe about 4,000 quality relationships, and then build on top of that to get to 10,000 quality relationships. And what I mean by that is when you're adding someone to the database, the most most important thing that I learned about this is your referral source of that database has to have a great relationship with that client. It does you no good whatsoever getting a list of past clients from someone that didn't focus on having a five-star experience, that didn't focus on creating raving fans. Because when you call a John Smith, the client said, hey, Patty Sue referred you to me, the conversation doesn't go well if they didn't like Patty Sue. So at the end of the day, the quality of the database, so to answer your question candidly, it's at 8,900, I'll be in a scale of down to 4,000, 5,000 with super quality, market to those and over time, Add another five hundred. Add another thousand. It's got to be quality. I I love that. What about what about criteria? And I don't know if it was you that mentioned this a year or so ago, but like you you raised the standard on what a great past client was, and it was I used to think anybody I closed the loan for past client, and then you said you know what until they've referred me someone now that is let alone they referred at least one person. I had someone else, and I asked them what your criteria was. And they said someone I've closed a loan for, and they've given me an online review. Uh, clearly, if you're inheriting databases, you're managing mortgages, and you even close a loan, your definition of a quality person is different. But 
but what are, what is the, and, and I put you kind of like the mega scaler. Uh, for those of you that are listening, I do think you should make that criteria that you're going to get a lead during the transaction, a referral, and we'll talk about strategies on how to do that. I do believe that if you didn't get an online review from someone, uh, it doesn't mean they're not a past customer that you want to put into HomeBot, but it just means you got work to do. They're not, they're not engaging. What is your criteria, Wally, for uh, like you're going to take it from nine to four? How are you going to do that? Yeah, I mean, for 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 the sake of transparency and the record, I did not I did not say that. I learned that from you. Uh, somebody, I guess, told you that, and right when you said that it was about you know two three years ago. That made a lot of sense. I mean, it was a different mindset shift. We started reading ra raving fans, and now we as a team read raving fans of like once a quarter. And then the whole mindset shift behind that is if they referred you a client, somebody else to be able to grow and scale the business and grow a relationship with, then they're truly a client, right? So, you know, fan past family served, yes, that was about 1,500. Did I receive 1,500 referrals from the 1,500? No, I did not. Um, the 8,900 of the database, no, I didn't. However, what I've learned is the best relationships, the best best referrals that you can add into HomePod and or mortgage coach are the ones that have relationships with their referral partners. So a good rule of thumb that I had is who, who in your database has referred you the most clients? Who are your top 10 clients in your database that referred you the most clients? And then I start really making those my A pluses and focusing on those. So I, I can earn them being a raving fan, raving fan for my business, just like my financial advisor did. So you just said something, A plus. Do you have, so there's a, in your CRM, there's a criteria that, hey, past client, mortgage under management, they're in HomeBot. And then do you have like A, B, C, so that you can look at those based off of different criteria? Yeah, A plus clients are the ones that refer to multiple clients and so multiple clients are more than three or more A's or clients that refer to at least two B's or clients that would refer us in their situation. Uh, C or who we try to move up to B's. So you just want to keep moving them up. It's the old Brian Buffini, um, I guess, structure model from like the late 90s. Love, love that. So audience, I do, you know, take away, make sure that your past clients are well documented in your CRM. Make sure they're in HomeBot. If you don't have it HomeBot, you should get it. We'll talk about how Wally uses HomeBot in a minute. Uh, make sure that you're giving everybody a total cost analysis so they see you as more than a transactional load officer. I do think you might want to have a category if someone's giving you an online review, like, okay, that is a certain level of participation and appreciation. And I do think if someone's giving you a referral, there's a certain level like, oh, they're a referrer. And, and we're going to talk about how to get referrals while you're in the transaction. Uh, well, anything you want to add on that? before we, we kind of move down move down the line here? I mean, I think the first however minute, 20 minutes that we've been on this call, I think what I really want you know, the audience to understand, my goals are my goals. They don't have to be, they don't have to be their goals. And I really feel like what I, what I struggled with as I was moving up the ranks was I'd measure myself to others and I would feel less than which, you know, it was a motivator, but it wasn't the healthiest way. So figure out what kind of business you want to build for you and then take nuggets from every one of us and go build that specific business. But don't feel less than just because you're closing 100 million or you're not closing 100 million or whatever the number is. Yeah, I love that, Wally. Uh, when we did Scriptapalooza and Jay Kroll, who's an iconic producer, he's going to do well over 200 million this year out of Seattle. And he started with the whole thing about that. Like, you know, I'm, I, I am, I think my role at Mortgage Coach is to find some monster producers. I also find some young new loan officers that are killing it uh, and share those best practices, but it is important. What are your goals? Now, tell me if you agree with this, Wally. If you're a referral-based local loan officer, you should make scaling your database your number one priority. And you should have intention around that they should be in CRM, ACRM, they should be in HomeBot, and they should get a total cost analysis. Can we align that if you're not doing that as a referral-based local mortgage professional, you're, you're, just run, you're a hamster running on a wheel and you're having to reinvent yourself all the time? 
That, and also you got to remember what I said. So I am getting databases from financial advisors, CPAs, family will attorneys, um, and even insurance agents. So those databases all have mortgages for them to be in that database provide a half time mortgage. Well, if they got a mortgage, they were connected to the loan officer on the other end. Well, I, 10 out of 10 times when I'm talking to the client. So I don't want to, I don't want to step on toes. Did your loan officer call you to do an annual mortgage review? And how did that go? Well, what's that? And no, they didn't. I've still not come across one single person that said, yes, my loan officer did an annual mortgage review and I, I don't, I don't need your help. So I feel like there's the masses, I mean, probably like 99.9% .9 of loan officers. And I was like that for many, many years myself is truly close the loan and get a commission and go to the next one. And we're just leaving so much easy business on the table that I really hope that I bring the light for today and help people close more business, help more families, but it's easier for them. Cool. So, well, I'm going to share a, a strategy from our interview that I did this year. It's going to take about a minute. If you could, while I'm doing that, because we still got 40 minutes left, could you maybe, I see your Apple headset next door, maybe put one of them in and sync it up just because you're a little tenny and I think people will be able to hear you a little better. So see if you can sync that up in while I'm uh, sharing this idea. Uh, so I am not on this Mac, but I can see if the... Don't worry about it. Like we can hear you. I just know that if you had that iPad or that iPod working, Apple pod working, it would be better. So, so guys, I want to share an idea and we want to get Wally's impressions about it. And I'm going to ask him, how do you ask for referrals? Let me tell you one of the best answers I've had from that was from Jeremy Forcier, who has already closed over 400 loans this year, has already, I think he's crossed 200 million. He's probably going to hit about 250. Now he's in a California market, so we can't compare him to Wally. But he came up with a great way to ask for a referral during the process of the loan. And here's his strategy. It's not only what he says, it's when he says it. He waits until the client says, thank you. And he said that often happens at clear to close or approval. And at that point of thank you, he just sends him this email. Um, we love helping you. Can you help me with something? My goal is to work with more people I like. Can you introduce me to two people you think I should know and I can help? Guys, when I, I've interviewed Jeremy multiple times this year. Every time I interview him, he said that number one, this is his highest lead conversion referral. So it even beats referrals from advisors. It beats referrals from realtors. This is his highest conversion. And he's closing at least five loans every single month because he's just asking this question during the process when they say thank you. So one thing I wanna push upon everybody is have a great way that you ask for referrals. So, so Wally, first of all, before I ask you how you do it, what are your thoughts on that? You like that idea? I think it's brilliant and it's simple and everybody should reduplicate it. As simple as that. Love it. How, how are you and when are you asking referrals to drive your, your model right now? Yeah, we, we start a lot earlier in the process. Doesn't, doesn't mean I'm right or he's wrong. He's, he does a, lot, a ton of business. I'm sure he's right in his aspect of it. But we start from the beginning and it's just a simple script is, hey Dave, there's two types of loan officers out there. There's a type of loan officer out there that will take your business, do your loans, a transaction. There's a type of loan officer out there that's relational. I want to add value to you during the process. I'm going to truly listen to your wants and needs and goals and be in a relationship with you after, after closing so I can earn that opportunity for referrals to your family and friends. So I need to give you permission, Dave, to let me know at any point in the process when if you feel that are more the transactional side versus some more the relational side because I really want to earn those referrals. Will you please do me a favor and call me out on it if you see that happening? Boom. And, and that's like the first early part of the process and every time you're getting on the phone, hey, how am I doing on earning your referrals? Do you, know, you feel I'm being relational or do you feel I'm being transactional? So we do that then at prequal. We do that at a high trust interview. We do that throughout the process. I do that six, six times during the process for the sake of just repetitive of reminding them, reminding them, reminding them, reminding them. So, so guys, that's a script alert to my mortgage coach marketing team. Let's make some micro content around that because that was just such a solid script. And I, I guarantee Jeremy will be adopting that. Uh, he, he said he does ask for a referral. When I interviewed him, he asked at the beginning, 
He just says, I don't get that many leads. He goes, but I ask again when they say thank you and I get a lot of leads. So one, he may not have as good a script as you do, uh, but he, he said the way I see it is my first ask is just kind of like I'm training him, that I'm a referral-based loan officer and I want referrals. And that's his magic mark. But that, that script was golden. And then the other thing I love about that script is not only did you ask for a referral, you, you positioned yourself as an advisor and you gave them not only permission, you encouraged them to actually give you feedback throughout the process. So, I mean, there's, there's multiple levels of brilliance around that script, bro. Um, all right, so, so let's talk about scaling your database. We know your size, we know some of the criteria. Remember audience, if you're in Facebook, ask me questions, I'll go in there in a minute and check. And if you're in Zoom and you have questions, ask away, we will have time for those. But let's talk about the, the tools and platforms that you use. I know you use Mortgage Coach, and I do want to hear how you're using Mortgage Coach to scale your database. And what else are you using? I mean, it's, it's Mortgage Coach and Hellbot and Jingo. That's uh, uh, like Rank Central. That's literally like our actually schedule ones. So the major one that we use more than anything, which was super cool, like you said, I did like 4,000 or so DCAs, which I didn't know was that high. But, um, you know, there's you use mortgage coach, and it's a team standard. No if, ands, or buts. Every single client receives a, a mortgage coach uh, TCA. Number two is we now we use Jingo. I'm sorry, now we use um, HomeBot. And HomeBot is something that we has helped us a ton of being able to stay in contact with our database with something cool versus, like, you know, olden, olden, olden days, you remember we mailed those ma mailers that have a menu on it or, or a, re I'm sorry, a recipe on it or like, you know, things to do around the house and like stuff to like try to have a conversation for. And when you got home by, you got that technology. Like I, I personally check it out. My wife checks it out. Like it's a cool technology to check out. And I love the analytics behind the scenes of seeing who, who watched it, who didn't watch it. We've done a great job of, of staying in relationships with our referral partners and, you know, one of our previous videos that you and I did together, Dave, was back in like 2018, and, and I made a commitment, and, and you helped me a ton with that. And you know, 2018, three percent of our, our business came from our database, three percent, and we jumped to 2019, 37 percent of our business came from our database. And, you know, we've kept on growing that, and you know, it's super cool that 19 percent of the loans that we close so far year to date has come from referrals from our current clients referrals for to their networks and or referrals from in process which for me to be able to say 19 percent like two or like 2018 it was like zero percent like we got a referral it was like like crazy so at the end of the day like being able to scale your database means getting more from fewer getting more from less doing less closing more and i was always a loan officer for two decades of I'm just going to work harder. I'm going to work more evenings. I'm going to work more weekends. I've got to add more referral partners. And before I knew it, I got really transactional. And before I knew it, I got very um, lead generation, online lead focused guy. And you realize there's so much business that you're leaving on the table that has really changed my mindset about that. I really understood how to really scale my database and get the most out of my database, which I could definitely improve so much more. But also now I'm reduplicating that success into my wealth advisors database, my CPAs database, and so on. Love, love that guy. So um, Todd Bookspan put a link for anybody that's not on Homebot that will save you the sign up fee. And I do believe Todd has created some training content and scripts uh, as part of Win by Noon for that. So check that out. It's in our Facebook link down below. So, so let's go this. So you use your CRM. That's critical to scaling your database. You use Mortgage Coach. You use HomeBot. By the way, guys, those are both links. You know, HomeBot, it's an email with a link. Mortgage Coach, it's an email with a link. Uh, you, I have to assume to do a mortgage transaction, you have a link that you send clients, right? Your point of sale link. Uh, what percentage of your clients come through that link? You know, whether, you know, like, you're driving an intentional process where clients are filling out information on link. What percent? I mean, I'd probably say 97 ish. Um, so, if not more. Yeah. So modern loan officers use the link to take the app. 
Modern loan officers use a link to give monthly value with HomeBot. Modern loan officers use a link to give advice. And then you heard said schedule once. And well, that's one type of schedule automation solution. I'm finding that modern loan officers give a link to schedule a meeting. What percentage of your meetings are scheduled with a link? Uh, I won't tell you, I'll just show you. Um, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So every 30 so, minute increment is scheduled with a link and an, an accountability person on the other end with that client or with that referral partner. And I, I scheduled the majority of my meetings now with a link. You know, we use um, HubSpot as our CRM and we have a, a link in it, but Calendly is great. What, what about um, um, Zoom? Are you, are you doing virtual meetings and using Zoom or one of their competitors? You know, yes, we're doing virtual meetings. You know, some of the trainings that I'll do and some of the coaching I'll do is through Zoom. Uh, but, you know, we, we reopened the office back in June. Um, if clients come in, we, we get we six feet apart. Well, we might wear masks. So um, I'd say we're more Zoom for the sake of like more of the masses, like group settings. Now, uh, like group coaching and group training. Whereas like the one-on-one -on -one relationships are still face-to-face. -face. Okay. And then what about video? Like a bomb bomb, you know, call it email link video. Do you use any, do you use video? Uh, yes, and we've, we've probably done thousands a uh, year to date easily. So that's one of the campaigns that we'll talk about of how, so once I get a database, and he's telling me I'm kind of jumping, once I get a database, we do three things. We send an agent legend video text that goes out at, at 3 p.m. Then we send a, um, I apologize, I apologize. First one's at 3 p.m. is the slide aisle broadcast, which is the referral partner calling the client leaving them a voicemail telling them Wally's going to reach out to you to do your annual mortgage if you and expect Wally's call. You get the, you get a video text from me saying, Hey, so-and-so referred, reached out to me, wanted me to help you do your, your mortgage efficiency checkup through HomeBot. And then the last one is a bomb bomb video email of me and that referral partner, me and that referral partner explaining what the annual mortgage view is and how it's helpful to them. That, that goes out to every single person that, that we, we've adopted the database from. So, so guys, I mean, Wally is a modern mortgage originator. Every step of the process where a client, he's either making it easy for them to transact with them, he's making it easy for them to make decisions and communicate with them, and he's making it easy to communicate. And, and how badass is that that he's actually doing a video with the referral partner saying, hey, this is why we did what we did and he's connecting his trust with that person that person is handing their trust to wally and they're communicating the value that they're delivering together so that's what we're well, in you you give me way too much credit for the record i can't i can't figure out how to undo that beeping noise that you keep hearing <laughs> us than a one or two you're going to share my screen for me because i don't know how but when it comes I, like I, work, I, yes 100 percent the, the technology We've got such an amazing team. I, I get way too much credit for everything that they've helped me set up technology-wise. I mean, you've got amazing support around you. It's just so much easier to do so much more business the easy way. Yeah, well, no, I, I don't give you too much credit because here's here's the deal, guys. The modern originator doesn't mean that he could he or she could type 80 words a minute. Doesn't mean that they can do everything with technology personally, but the modern originator figures it out. They either do it themselves or they build teams to do it, or they have, you know, organizations that help support them with integrations. And so, you know, but the modern originator figures it out. I mean, families live on mobile devices and they, they want to fill out the transaction with a link. They want to get a, vi a video with a link. They want to get mortgage options with a link. They like scheduling their time with a link. And so the modern originator figures it out. And remember guys, while the modern originator uses technology, they're great leaders. You know, they're, they're good managers. They create platforms. So that, again, that's assuming that you want to close 100 loans a year. You can close 30, 50, 70 loans a year, no team. Maybe use technology. I mean, technology saves you time. Um, but it's just, it's just a question of how ambitious you are, what type of leadership skills you have, and what type of leader, what type of ambition do you have? And I'm not here to fault you. Whatever your ambition is, you bring that to the mortgage coach table. 
And my job is to just give you ideas and strategies to help you achieve the goals you have for yourself. So Wally, let's start breaking it down. Um, guys, we are a little over halfway. We got about 24 minutes. So there are some questions. Uh, Julie Brown just signed up for the Mortgage Coach Summit. Julie Brown, thank you for that. Uh, let's see, yep, we don't have questions yet. But guys, remember, this is a mastermind. Let's do that. So Wally, what should we show first? Like when you think of, I think we've, we've given a lot of 30,000 foot level concepts. We've given one badass script. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with Mortgage Coach or do you want to start with HomeBot? And while we're not going to show HomeBot, you, you can describe what you're doing. Where do you want to start? Yeah, a question, question I get to ask a ton is probably one of the easiest ones to answer, but it was difficult for me to figure out the answer, which was, Wally, how do you get their database? How do you get your Wealth Advisors database? Like, what do you do, right? What do you say? Like, how does that conversation go? And the, the, there was a, there's a wealth advisor I sent you, I sent you a TCA for, uh, and he responded back this morning. So I, I meet this wealth advisor. He's a referral from another wealth advisor that I know. His name is Brandon. And then I get on the phone with Steven, and he goes, well, tell me a little bit about what you do for your clients. And I walk him through what we do with annual mortgage abuse and also mortgage efficiency checkups and such. And I said, you know what? I can tell you to tell him blue in the face, but – why don't you allow me to show you, Stephen? I said, send me over your most recent mortgage statement, and I will build, rebuild this for you in my, the software I've got access to called Mortgage Coach, and I'll create a total cost analysis for you. So he sends me over his mortgage statement. I create a TCA for him. I walk him through how his current loan is structured. I walk him through how, um, how it compares to a new 30-year, a new 20-year, a new 15-year. How by restructuring, you can increase your net worth, and increase your equity. And I walk him through all of that and I say, hey, and, and then that's his email, his response back. He goes, you know, um, was the first sentence there? I, what, man, I love the presentation. Do I have your permission sending this over to one of the clients that we're meeting with? And we met with one of his clients via Zoom this morning. And the next thing from there, the next conversations is really simply is, Hey Stephen, tell me tell me a little bit about how do you how do you interact with your database? And what I'm wanting to figure out now is Stephen's pain points, Stephen's challenges of how he has communication with his database. And he's telling me, you know, I'm having you know, I reach out, it's difficult sometimes to figure out what topics to talk about. And I said, Do you feel like it would it would be helpful if I help put together scripts for you, which I already have, help put together scripts of what to say for your clients and how to team me up where I can come in and do an annual mortgage review for your clients and add value to them. Plus also at that same point, Stephen, I'm going to find out if they're investing $500,000 with you, but they've got 250,000 over here with a rollover 401k or rollover IRA that I can help move over. Would that be helpful to you? So now I'm giving him another talking point. Now I'm giving him the ability to clean the plate, move all their investments over to them. Now I'm giving him the ability to be a voice in that client's ear of saying how great Steven is. You mirror match all three of those and we do all the heavy lifting and we do all the technology. It, it, it's, it's super easy to gather their database and, and market to their database. So let's pause right there and, and did I unravel that well enough or where do you want me to go deeper? All right, guys. So what I want to do is I'm going to share my screen and we're just going to do the how-to on it. So first of all, let's just start with the feedback from the financial planner. You know, the, the advisor said some really nice things. You know, I, man, love that presentation. So, so documented words, how much he appreciates the service and the value that Wally delivers. This is a sample of one of Wally's emails that looks like you delivering an annual review to a client. Is that, what, what are we looking at here, Wally? That. So he sent me over his mortgage statement I put together, or my team put together the, TC, the TCA for the goals that I learned from the call with him of what his plan for his mortgage and his wealth is when it comes to his mortgage. And then I made a four minute video breaking down what, what the benefits are. And as I'm, as I'm making that video, I'm making it clear to him that he will not be able to reach his goals with the current mortgage structure that he has and or it'll be more difficult and or it will take him longer to reach his goals and or it will cost him more money and equity to reach his goals. So I'm just Swiss cheesing the mortgage. I'm doing that factually 
and I'm doing that with a vision of what could be possible which is super easy now. I schedule tomorrow at four o'clock on my calendar to do, to do that loan application for me to help him restructure his mortgage from a 30 year to a 15 year because he wants, he's got, his goals are different. He can't get to the same finish line. So the mindset behind that is, first things first, got, gather your wealth advisors or whoever it is your for our partner's mortgage statement. Number two, create a TCA. Number three, break it all down of what the video is of how you you can help them more be beneficial. You're just dangling the carrot. That's all you're doing. And then number number four from there is set an appointment with them where you can go over with them and invite the spouse. When I do that, the next thing is an application. The next thing is a loan. And um, I mean, what's great about that is now they're going to be a huge raving fan to their data, database for you. Got it. Love that. So by the way, Alberto, I'm going to make sure we unpack some scripting on how to ask for the referral again in just a minute. So I'll make sure we, we do that. I mean, I think Wally covered it at a high level conceptually, but we'll literally do a real play on, on how, to, how to ask someone for a database. So before we do that, I want to make sure, you know, every time I show a total cost analysis, and this is a, a TCA total cost analysis, I, I don't know if this is the one you want to go through, Wally, but I, I noticed you put a video on it. Uh, how, how often do you put a video on a mortgage coach TCA? Uh, only 10 out of 10 times. So always notice guys, when I interview top producers that are modern mortgage professionals, they have systems, they have tactics and they are consistent. And, and while we, we think bomb bomb videos are great and there is a time and place for that. We think text videos are great and there is a time place. That's what modern originators do. But when you're delivering, numbers and presentations and decisions, putting a mortgage coach video on it. I interviewed uh, Kevin Carlson. He's going to close off, closed a hundred loans last month. And when I talked to him, how did you do that? The total cost analysis, he always puts a video on it because it saves him time. He, he basically says doing that mortgage coach with a video saves me 20 minutes per client. Every time I do it, it saves me time. So, so Wally, let's go well, through this. Oh, you want to say on. I mean, Time is huge, but increasing the conversion rate is like, it's like, I mean, if I tracked, which I don't want to even try to track, if I tracked, what's my conversion rate if I have a video versus I don't have a video, I, I bet my net worth that it's a lot less, I do a lot less loans if I don't have that video. But the two main reasons are, if you look at it, you can track how many times, I'm understanding you can track the number of times they've opened it and watched the video. Multiple of times they will watch that video. And every time they're watching that video, they're re-ingraining in their brain the, the ability of success that you're the vehicle that gives them that. That's number one. Number two, the big power of that video is now they can show it to their spouse. Now they can show it to their nose neighbor. Now they can send the presentation to Bob down the street that's also looking at refinancing. This presentation makes it so much easier when you've got a how-to or walking them down the path video. Does that make sense? It, it, it does. So, so before we, we go through this one, you say it's improving the conversion. If you had a guess, would you say it's improving conversion by at least 15 or 20%? I was going to guess closer to 25. Okay, so improve conversion by 25%. Guys, that means if you're doing four loans a month, that's an extra loan a month. So you're going to get an extra loan if you deliver a total cost analysis. And you might get five extra loans. What about time savings? Does it save you time? Absolutely. And also at the end of the day, I bet if we tracked it, you figure also that you get shopped less. You know, it doesn't matter if someone's a lower rate than you. I mean, for the most times, I promise you, I've lost many loans to internet lenders. But most of the time, if someone's an eighth or a point or a quarter point less than you, but they don't add remotely this amount of value. But if you don't have a video, you cannot articulate the value that you bring to the table unless you're on the phone. You take that time to add that value. Using the video leverages my time to be able to add value, which articulates what I'm worth. I, I love that. So, guys, add a video to your TCA. You'll notice, I mean, Wally's got it all. I mean, he's with Fairway, so... He's got his personal team branding. He's got his company branding. They've got the social survey integration turned on. 
Uh, do, do you call that out sometimes? Is there a way that when you're going through a TCA, I, like I talk, I, I interview a lot of law officers and some of them tell me like, but I know I got a rate shopper or I know someone where I have some trust to build, I'll call that out. But do you call that out sometimes or all the time? Absolutely. So I asked him, hey, when you go on Amazon, when you go through it and you're picking out different, some, different things from Amazon, do you ever look through reviews? Yeah, I look at the reviews and I look at the comments. Okay, here's 432 reviews, 4.8. You can't fudge 432 reviews. Take, take, a look, take a look at my reviews. You know, I'm, I'm never going to be the guy that says, hey, my reviews are better than such and such. But when you have a 4.8 out of 5 and there's 400 some odd reviews there, like you can't fudge that. So guys, you just got another script, mortgage coach marketing team. Let's broadcast that out because again, this is one of the things that makes Wally so brilliant. You notice how he asked the question, do you, when you buy things on Amazon, look at the reviews? The client says yes. And then with contrast, he brings it in. That's what great salespeople do. They ask great questions and they position things that they have strength about. Uh, so cool, that was a, a money script, appreciate that. Now, do you call this a total cost analysis or do you have a different term in how you position this with the client? You know, I should probably, yeah, I have a different term. So I call it a mortgage efficiency checkup. Um, you know, if, I, if I've got like a, uh, a total fitness guy or girl, I call it a mortgage fitness checkup. You know, there's different terms. So I call it, is there a patent something that is copyrighted? No. Uh, it's just, uh, I was advised by a good friend of mine Ryan Grant asked me once, he goes, why do you call annual mortgage review? If you call me, I do an annual mortgage review and I get a 3% rate. Okay, it's been reviewed next. So you've got to figure out, and I focus on where are the inefficiencies, just like I focused in my business, where are the inefficiencies in your mortgage and how can I point out those inefficiencies that will not allow you to get to your goal? So if I know your goal is this and I can build so much – value around what your family life will be like if you can reach your goal. How much more happier it'll be if you can reach your goal. What's your wealth going to look like if you can reach your goal? And I'll walk you through how factually you cannot reach your goal in the mortgage vehicle that you're in right now. However, here's three other options like that you can jump in that vehicle. It can help you reach your goal for your net worth goal, to your interest savings goal, to your cash flow goal, to your home payoff goal, to the next home you want to buy five years from now, the equity position you want to be in so you can put 20% down on that next house. These are all goals, but you've got to be brave enough to ask those questions. You gather that data and you work out the path. Love, love, love this. So I'm going to go to questions in a minute. Anything you want to call out on this so that people at least know how you walk people through a TCA? You know, I think earlier when I was doing this, a mistake that I made was I take a look at this. This guy's at 4.375. He's on a 30-year fix. I would assume, I would assume, which is a really bad mistake, I would assume his goal would be to, to stick with that 30-year. You drop the rate a quarter point, but then, you know, it's $123 a month. You, if you can't put $123 a month in my checking account on a monthly basis, I wouldn't even feel it. I wouldn't even know it, and most people would probably be in the same category. So what I walk through is like, tell them, okay, so tell me a little bit about, I look at a mortgage as a rate of return. I look at a mortgage as an investment vehicle. So you're going to invest $3,000 in your mortgage month after month after month. And over the next 10 years, you're going to receive $68,000 in extra principal that you paid down. How do you feel you're doing on your rate of return? Uh, it's not really good. Okay. So if you invested $300 more, your rate of return, move that video for me, Dave bottom right oh, or yeah. so if you invested three hundred dollars more and structure as a 20 year then you're easily looking at shaving off nine years off the mortgage but take a look at what that does i take it from a 68 68 thousand dollar rate of return to a hundred and forty one thousand dollar rate of return that sounds to me like a better investment vehicle for you to be in do you agree absolutely got the buy-in and he, he wants to move forward now if i've got the i've got clients that have a high very high income and they do a 30-year fixed mortgage i'm just asking them tell me a little bit about your wealth what do you do with your cash flow i invest here i invest here well what is your rate of return on investment and what a great conversation is hey what would you look what would it look like if you invested 300 dollars more a month but got seventy thousand dollar guaranteed number over the next 10 years with two things 
it's it, there's no taxes on that seventy thousand because it's equity that you paid down. And number two, it's an amortization schedule, so it's a guaranteed number. It doesn't matter if the Dow goes to this or the stocks go to that. None of that matters. So when I'm unpacking it that way and I'm changing the way they think and helping them understand the ability from a wealth advisor's mind of using their mortgage as an investment vehicle, the conversations are completely different. Guys, I want to call something out here. Uh, it just reminded me of a recent interview I did with Josh Metal. And one of the things that Wally's doing here is he's focusing on the long-term value. He's taking the focus off the transaction and the rate and the payment, and he's putting it on long-term. So, so when I interviewed Josh on how he's doing refis fast and easy, first, when he reaches out to his clients, he's not saying I can save you per month or I've got a great rate. He's talking about you know the value for the year. So like that's how he pulls people into the conversation. And then he consistently asks these four questions. You know, um, do you still like your home? How long do you think you'll be in your home? When do you want to be mortgage free? And what other non-debt do you want to consider? So he's got four questions that he always asks to get strategic. Wally, any, any questions that you consistently ask just so we can pull, you know, some of Josh's best practice questions, some of yours together into one? Um, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, there's one I always really ask is tell me a little bit about your guiding light. And what I mean by guiding light is what's the most important to you? Would it be helpful for you if you had more cash flow each month or have more increased equity or more net worth? You're just, what I'm using is just different words that provoke thought. You can use those same words and you can pick whatever other big words and the small words that you want to have. But with the most, mo most scripts that I structure and most, most people that I structure how, to, how I want to be framed is when you structure a script or how you want to be framed, you want to structure it to where my favorite thing ever here is, I don't know. That's a really good question. Once I hear that, I don't know. That's a really good question. I've got you 10 out of 10 times because now I'm changing. I've got the ability to pounce and now I've got the ability to change how you think. And when you structure your conversations that way, like Josh's script opens thought, opens conversation, it, 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 just, it just opens, it opens the floodgates. Love it, guys. So, hey, we've only got seven minutes left. Wally is going to be doing some how-to videos with a better mic and no little beep in our ear. And, and he's going he's gonna to get into how he uses Mortgage Coach to get more referrals, how he's using HomeBot and Mortgage Coach together, how he scales his database, and, and a couple how-to videos. So, Wally, before we wrap, because I also want to get your, your exact script on how you're asking referrals, I, I do want to unpack. This is something that I am seeing come up a lot, where, especially in this COVID marketplace, a lot of people don't like the, the home that they're in. And when I interviewed Amber Kovark, uh, by the way, can you see this on my screen? Am I sharing my screen? No. No, I will now. Sharing my screen. She is yes. consistently asking you know, is your current house still working? Again, in her market, she puts her personality around it and some words around her market. And then she's finding that, you know, a lot of people are coming to her for a refi. And in this particular case study, it was, uh, she could have saved them $322, but she, the family did want to look at a bigger home. So she looked at a bigger home that would have been in the school district they wanted with an extra bedroom and they qualified for it with 5% down. And, and she said, well, you could do one of two things. You could qualify, you know, non-contingent, buy your new home. When you sell that home, they had 125,000 in equity. You could recast your loan and save $164,000. Or you could take that $125,000, put it with your financial advisor. They were getting 8% on their money, but she conservatively put in six. And guys, this is where more, being a mortgage advisor, being a mortgage coach comes in this family was able to significantly improve their net worth, their liquidity, and get their dream home. And then you know, the beauty of this is she was able to give one of her agents uh, a listing for a move up and a buyer for a move up. Wally, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that strategy? And are you asking that question at all? Um, first of all, uh, completely brilliant. And uh, year to date, I, I think I, I'd never heard of this idea until probably about three weeks ago or four weeks ago when you and I reconnected. And uh, I, I've done it a handful of times. And kind of like we talked about earlier, 
I've done a handful of times. I'm surprised how well it's worked. I haven't yet really put a script around this, so it's not part of the model just yet. But uh, but I will, and, and I need to go back to this watch this video. If if I if I ever get a path opportunity introduction to her, I'd love to jump on a call and learn from her, or just adopt her scripts. That'd probably be easier. But uh, no, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Well, well, guys, Amber. Well, you can check out the interview I did with her in our YouTube channel. Plus, we made some micro content. We edited out her specifics, refi versus move up script. But she's all going to, so going to create an amazing how to presentation for the Modern Mortgage Summit, where she just with a great mic, with no being going off. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to remember why I told you I'm going to tease you for two years over that. Uh, uh, she's going to she's going to create a really tight piece of education for the Modern Mortgage Summit. So so Wally, we got six minutes. So one, I want to close out with just a script. Like if you were asking an advisor or someone for their database, what would that sound like? Um, okay. So Dave, tell me a little bit about how do you add value to your database? We're in a role play one. I know, I know. I, I, what does that mean? I don't do that. Uh, well, by the way, what do people usually say? I send um, a newsletter? I send a newsletter or I have my team calls and I try to schedule at the yearly renewal. Um, I do so birthday cards, the, you know. Question, the question is built for you to struggle to answer. The question is built for you to struggle to answer. And then I can come in as a savior of the equation. Okay, now I've, I've verbally made it clear you're struggling and you've, you've, you've confirmed that you're struggling. So then I say, well, have you ever looked at ways outside the box to add value to your database? Ooh. And if so, how have they worked out for you? Okay. Ooh. Now, what would that look like? Right? So what, what would that look like? Or what do you mean by that? Or what, what are you talking about? So one thing that I do is I want to add value to your database so I can earn your referrals and your database's referrals. I'm never going to ask for a referral from you if I don't feel like I've earned it. And right now, I don't feel like I've earned it. So what I want to do is I've got access to two technologies, one called HomeBot, one called Mortgage Coach. You do me a favor, I see one favor from you, and this will be 110% worth your time. So can you email me a copy of your mortgage statement? Yeah, sure. What are you going to do with that? Okay, just email me a copy of mortgage statement, and I'll walk you through how to build a total cost analysis for you, make sure your mortgage is running efficiently, which is called a mortgage efficiency checkup. And then secondly, from there, I want to create a HomeBot software for you that always helps you keep track of what your equity position on your mortgage is and make sure that you use your equity position to maximize your wealth. Would that be helpful to you? Yes, it's great. I love it, blah, blah, blah. And then I jump into, okay, once I do the TCA, once I, then I'm doing a mortgage efficiency checkup. Then I'm asking a simple question from there. So Dave, did you find, one to 10, did you find this valuable? And the whole entire time, I'm getting buy-in through the conversation. And like, yeah, absolutely, it's the best thing ever, dot, dot, dot. So great. How about I do this for your clients, your database, and you take the credit for it? And you take the reward for it? you grow your relationship deeper and you can tell them until you blew in the face that how great you are. But when I tell them that how great you are, it adds value to you. Then I can always find out if they have other investments somewhere else I can give you a heads up on. And what I want to also do is once I create the TCA, I want to get that over to you also. So when you do the annual financial review with them, you've got an annual mortgage efficiency checkup on a yearly basis that continues to be updated for them. But I'll need to be able to contact where it me about a week to two weeks before you have the annual mortgage efficiency. And now I'm integrated through their database throughout the whole entire year to two years to five years past. Boom. So guys, you got a great script. Well, I, I am going to add that to maybe if you could, you know, provide a couple how-to videos and just do one without the Bing with a better mic and, <laughs> and have and have a how to ask for a database because that i mean that is just brilliant if anybody hasn't figured it out guys wally he is a brilliant leader he he knows how to delegate he knows how to lead people and he knows how to ask great questions and then build his unique value into the response i mean genius level scripts um thank you wally you've been incredible 
I, there's so many more questions I want to ask you, but you killed it. Uh, guys, if you got value from today's interview, give it a like down below, whether you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook, share it with your mortgage team. We're going to have a couple, I, I would think as many as Wally will create three great how to's that will be super tight in the annual, um, or in the annual, in the modern mortgage summit. Click down below, wherever you're watching this, there'll be a link to sign up. It will be live on 10, 20, 2020. And it will also be available on demand for 30 days afterwards. So check it out. Wally, for anyone that wants to connect with you, cause you're such a great leader. You're such a great coach. You create great content. What's the best channel and the best way for people just to, to follow you and, and get to know you? Well, first of all, you give me way too many compliments. And if you keep it up, I'm gonna have you call my wife. That, that, that would be bigger, better than you tell how great I am. Um, no, so, I, you know, best things through Facebook, uh, Coach Wally, Coach Wally, go to Facebook, put Coach Wally in. You'll see my goofy self pop up. And I'll make videos on a weekly basis, walking through the traction. There's probably like 100 or some odd videos in there of how I built my business, who I built my business with, different scripts, different models, different technologies that helped me build it, and different teammates that I've helped adopt and help mentor and grow. So check out Coach Wally. But then, you know, one of the biggest things that I just wanted to make sure today, have I earned the opportunity to get back to that January 1 spot uh, in the mortgage coach community or have I lost my spot? No, no, dude. You, you, let's, if you want to schedule it, let's, let's schedule a mortgage <laughs> coach interview, whatever week, whatever Tuesday you want in January, just forward that over. I would, I would love to get back into that rhythm of kicking off the year with you, brother, because uh, you, you really, I know I give you lots of compliments, but I've, I've watched you now for three or four years with a lot of intention. You know, think about my business, think about what do I need to do to get to the next level and create a sustainable, modern mortgage platform that's like a snowball rolling down the hill. And every year you execute. You, you went from 2018 to not being great at referrals and past clients to 2019 being great at that. And then you said, you know what, in 2020, I want to, cr well, no, in 2019, you crushed it. And then you said, you know what, I want to build out and expand beyond realtors. I want to help financial planners, wealth advisors, and you crushed it. So I want to, I can't wait to interview you in 2021, brother. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you, Dad. Take care, everybody. This call is a wrap. Give us a like, share it with your mortgage friends. Take care, everybody. You too.